Hi there, today I'd like to talk about how I built the Echo High Video Finder or Video Concierge. So there's a, quite a few things I learned, especially about retrieval. So let's get started. For example, we can try with, I want to learn about Autogen. This works really well. So it has all my videos in a JSON format and it recommends the URLs for videos plus the Patreon code download links. Okay, here we go. This is the video for the Autogen. Let's click, make sure it's correct. It is and also the code download link. So it is instructed to give the video URL plus the code download link. It's finding all these from .json file. So I actually did have a, a CSV file with all my videos, uh, their URLs and descriptions and transcriptions. And that CSV file wasn't working at all because currently GPTs don't accept CSV files. But even when I convert it to a JSON file, it wasn't working very well at all. So in this video, I'd like to discuss how I did it to uh, get it working very well. And at the end, it actually gives the link to my website, echohive.live, where you can find all my videos. It also gives the link to the Discord app. I have the application launch already and my Twitter. So it does this every time. So you can actually do that too. That is handled in the instructions. So let's begin. Let's begin by talking about the CSV file and the conversion to the JSON file, which got it working really well. One thing to take note about the new tools, such as Retrieval, is that if you go to supported files in the documentation, CSV was actually checkmarked as usable in Retrieval, but currently it's not. I, I believe there's a bug or something. So you can't really use CSV files for Retrieval. I'm pretty sure they'll fix that. So if you upload a CSV file, the first problem I uh, saw was that it was saying this file will be accessible to Code Interpreter. So it wasn't accessible by Retrieval. So you keep that in mind. But then I thought, okay, well, you know, uh, I can just convert it into a JSON file because JSON uh, is good to go both for retrieval and code interpreter. Now, it is nice if you have your, you know, retrieval documentation in a CSV format, right? Because it just makes sense. It's easily, it's easily chunkable. I mean, each row can be a chunk, for example. However, the problem I had with my CSV file is that, see, my CSV file had a video ID, which is irrelevant in our case, a title, which is relevant, a description, uh, which, which includes the code file. The first link is relevant because that is the code file link that I provide to Patreon. But the rest of the links are not relevant, and it might actually serve to confuse the, the retrieval, right? Because there's all this, for example, this video is Assistance API Explained video, but it has a link to my auto AGI videos, also to my website, or to Discord, to Twitter. If this whole chunk were to be retrieved, I mean, most of the characters here are referring to something else, right? So let's keep that in mind. We do have the URL, which is important right here. So we do need the URL. And, and we have the whole transcription. And look at this transcription. I actually checked them. Transcription for this alone was like 8,000 tokens. So I thought actually having this whole information might be helpful. But honestly, the, a lot of the transcription is about coding details. And then I thought to myself, okay, let me, let me just simplify this situation. So first I thought I need to convert this to a JSON file. And JSON serves a really good purpose here because it's, it's a, this whole object is for a video. And it's easily understandable. It's easily chunkable, right? Title, description, URL, transcription. My first thought was this video ID is irrelevant. So I wrote some quick Python script with pandas to drop this. You can ask GPT-4 to do something like this. So obviously your CSV file is going to be something different, but just think about what is the most relevant information, right? And only keep that. And you can also consider, if you, even if you don't have a CSV, maybe if, you're docu if you can figure out some repetitions in your documentation, you can actually convert it into a CSV or better yet, a JSON file such as this. Uh, so my next thought was, okay, we do need the title. We do need the description. But then I thought the really relevant part of the description is the first part where there is the actual description and then the code file link. I thought I can use the code file link and then the video link and perhaps get GPT to recommend not only the, not only the video URLs, but also the code download links, which is very convenient, especially for patrons or people who wants to become a patron. And some of the download links are actually uh, free posts. So that's why I actually wrote a script with the help of GPT-4, which opens this file. And then it actually finds uh, the, it finds the, it find it reads each line, okay, out of the description column. And it reads the line until it finds code files. And then I, and then it keeps that line. And then it keeps the next line. And after that, it breaks out of the loop. So effectively, when you run this, it'll find this description. 
and it'll find this line. It'll keep this line and it'll keep the next line because that's always how it's structured in my descriptions. And then remove everything else, including all these other links, the chapters, and plus the uh, hashtags for a YouTube video, right? So when I did that, I was able to get the description to a very concise description plus the uh, code files. At Patreon, this code file download it also has some uh, possibly some important information. So that that was the first part that was useful for me. And then we keep the URL as it is. Okay, the URL column. Now with the transcription, I just thought, okay, normally speaking, in my videos, I in the beginning of the video, I give it a quick intro and I describe what the video is going to be about. So I thought I'll only keep the first one hundred characters. I thought. I'll try with the first, sorry, first 100 words. I, I thought I'll try with the first 100 word. If it doesn't work, then I'll add more. So this way I was able to get it to a really reasonable size. If we actually count the tokens here, if we enter it to OpenAI tokenizer at platform.openai.com slash tokenizer, see, I was able to reduce each uh, video's information to down to 253. Otherwise, this would have been almost like 9,000 tokens. And uh, obviously that that's not desirable. So when I did this, uh, yeah. So just let me say. So this modify videos for GPT .py file not only gets rid of the unwanted lines from the description, but then actually opens the transcription column and only gets the first one hundred words from it, and that saves it into a new a new CSV file. And then I have another function that actually converts it into uh, a JSON file. So after I after I did this, I simply just uploaded it, and this this worked. Okay, I mean it was this simple. So I guess giving some thought on how you want to organize your data and maybe only keep the essential relevant parts of it makes all the difference. Is what I found. Uh, one last thing to note is that I really like the JSON format here because I'm assuming. I mean this is only 300 tokens, so it probably keeps all of this. This is why it knows exactly what the video URL is. What the Patreon URL is. That's what I'm assuming, but we don't know what's going on in the background, right? Now let's come to the instructions. I actually found talking to GPT really useful on creating the instructions. I've also heard some people saying that they didn't like that. I, I employ the uh, mix, mix approach, mixture approach. I uh, told it, okay, I want you to uh, display the video URLs to the user, right? According to what the user is looking for. So the first part of the instructions pretty much was written by GPT, which says Echo High Video Concierge specializes in providing users with precise, relevant Echo High video URLs in response to their queries. The focus is on Echo High's video library, particularly videos about building AI powered apps using GPT, OpenAI API, and related libraries. When responding, the GPT should always include the direct video URLs in its replies, ensuring users have immediate access to the recommended videos. Each video suggestion should closely align with the user's interests or query. The GPT should rely on its uploaded knowledge base for information and avoid speculation. Okay. Now, the rest of this part I added, always display the video URLs and their associated code files at Patreon. And it's able to do that from my test almost perfectly every time. Always show the URL and the code download link for every video. I added that. I reiterated at the end of your, and then I added this to display my general links to my website, for example, echoive.live, to Discord and Twitter. Do, do follow me on Twitter. I can <laughs> I can use some followers, actually. Just check it out. Uh, my Twitter is uh, hive underscore echo. Anyway, I just added this at the end of your response. Always include a link to Echo Hive AI Academy, where users can search for Echo Hive videos with ease. I gave the link. Also display a link to Echo Hive Discord. I gave that link. I'll, I'll put these links in the description as well. And Echo Hive Twitter, and I gave it the link. So it does these things very well. <clears throat> the one only problem with you, excuse me, one, one problem with this is retrieval is a bit slow. If we, if we were to try it again, the retrieval part is slow, but I believe that's just slow. When I had the entire instructions, sorry, uh, the transcription, it was actually much slower. And so, but I guess that's just a thing. Just keep that. Keep in mind that having the JSON file small like this, in small chunks, actually increase the speed of the retrieval. So that's all I wanted to say. I hope you found this useful, and hopefully you'll make uh, some useful GPTs yourselves. Do let me know in the comments what you think of it. Here we go. We have the videos shown here. 
This is the, I believe it made a mistake with the second one, but the first oh, one. Wait. Do you really? Yeah, the second one uh, is not relevant, but the first one is correct, so that's good. Also, make sure you check out my website if you want to see my projects and find them easy, uh, the kind of content that you're looking for. It's echohive.live. You can simply browse through it. You can read the descriptions to each video. Uh, you can find the code download links. I also now have a link to the my GPT, Everything GPT API course in which I talk about the older library, the newer library, GPT vision speech examples, and assistance API explained in great detail. You can also do uh, real-time searches for it uh, in it. Uh, for example, Autogen. You can find all the videos that you're looking for, whether it's Autogen or Langchain. Here we go. A uh, link will be in the description. I'll also put the link to the Echo High video finder if you, if you think that will be more useful for you. Thank you for watching. And if you do find it useful, please share it with others. And see you in the next video.